Well, hello everyone and welcome to episode 158 of the Childless Not By Choice podcast. My name is Savilla Morgan. My mission is to recognize and speak to the childless not by choice women and men around the world. Reminding you, reminding us, that we can live joyful, relevant, fulfilled, childless not by choice lives. And whether you have children or not, thank you for tuning in. Well, let me say up front that I have my voice back somewhat. And so pardon me if I sound a little hoarse still. I'm going on two weeks now since I've been sick. And yes, I did lose my voice at one time. I really feel like it was COVID, but I didn't test when I was in the midst of it, really. I tested near the end of the illness. And of course, I came back negative for COVID and flu. I did get my flu shots in September, but I feel it was COVID because of the headaches loss of taste, loss of smell, just the overall feeling. I had the chills like it was flu, but then I was, you know, tired and just out of it and not much energy. And still just about two weeks later, not much of an appetite, to be honest. I'm just forcing myself to eat because if I don't eat, then I have other issues to deal with. I don't want to end back up in the hospital again like I did last March. So I have to eat. (laughs) But I try to just you know, keep something in my body, but really no appetite. That's where I am right now. At any rate, I will go ahead and get this episode out to you because it's well past due. I just drank some lemon ginger tea and I've been drinking water. I'm a I'm a water person. I love water. I could just drink water all the time. Water and coffee. Those are my two drinks of choice. But I had some uh, lemon ginger tea. And usually when I have tea, nothing in it, no cream, no sugar, no stevia, no nothing, just the tea. And the only tea, now I'm really going off on a tangent, but the only tea I will have creamer and stevia with is chai. Any other tea? No, it's just plain tea, no cream, no sugar. Anyway, I had lemon ginger tea, no cream, no sugar, had my water. Let's do this. And then I'll rely on my podcast producer to do his part. Because the other thing I'm dealing with right now is that I am recording from my new home. And it's it comes with its own set of noises. And so just bear with me as I try to gain on my new surroundings. And I'm going to have to break down and just go ahead and buy some of those sound buffers that I didn't really use before because I recorded from my office. Well, no office anymore. Much smaller but pretty surroundings. And so just bear with me if you hear any noises that my podcast producer is not able to edit out. That's what's going on. New surroundings, head cold, chest cold. Oh, it's just, just let's do this thing. (laughs) And I'll try not to laugh because that makes me cough even more. Oh boy, I tell you, the life of a podcaster. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. The title of today's show is How Old Is Too Old to Have a Baby? Uh Uh-oh, the controversy begins. Well, before we do that, I would like to thank my Patreon contributors. I would like to take this moment to thank you for your monthly financial contributions to the platform. It is truly appreciated. You hear me say it every month. It's the truth. Your contributions help pay my podcast producer, my podcast host, Zoom, where I record interviews, and so on. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you are not a patron, Visit patreon.com forward slash childless not by choice to set up your monthly contribution. No matter your giving level, I have a gift for you. And I really appreciate anything you can do to help me pay for all the things that make this podcast come to life. And of course, if you prefer to give via PayPal, you can find me on PayPal by going to Books by Civilla Morgan at gmail.com. That's books by Sevilla Morgan at gmail.com. And I would like to thank you for your PayPal contributions. They are appreciated. Whenever I get a PayPal contribution, I reach out to the sender. So you have gotten an email from me if you sent me a PayPal contribution. It is truly, truly appreciated. Thank you so very much. How old is too old to have a baby? Apparently, it's not age 70. Because it just happened. A woman in Uganda has had not one but two children. She had twins at the age of 70. Now, I'm not one to judge, especially when people are dealing with a situation that onlookers and family and friends and, you know, your village, your town, your home, you don't have all the insights. I'm not there. 
But I know that I just know she lives in a part of the world where she was probably looked down upon or shunned or shamed because she did not have children. Listen to this. She says, quote, the twins who will go by Baberi and Kato have given Namukwaya and her husband a new status in their rural village. Did you hear that? A new status in their rural village. The woman will be known as Nalongo, which means mother of twins, while husband Walu Simbi Badro will be known as Solongo or father of twins. Unquote. She also said, quote, There was a time I felt very sick because of the pregnancy. I spent nearly all of my savings. Unquote. She said she spent all, nearly all of her savings. And I know that there are a lot of people in the audience who can totally understand when you're spending all the money that you have for in vitro, IVF, maybe adoption, surrogacy. We're going to be talking about surrogacy next episode when we talk about, well, yeah, never mind. We're going to be talking about surrogacy and what a certain very well-known famous person said about surrogacy. I'm sure some of you have already heard what he said. That's my hint. He. And so anyway, she says, there was a time I felt very sick because of the pregnancy. I spent nearly all my savings, unquote. How many times in our community have we heard a childless, not by choice woman say those words or something similar? But as I read the story, and the link is in the show notes to the story. As I read the story, I was torn between two thoughts. Dare I say two opinions, which means my opinion really any of us, I guess, what do our opinions count for? But that's the saying. I was torn between two opinions. I wondered if I did enough to have a child on my own before my time ran out. And yes, it's easy to look back and second guess, but it's it's a different story when you are living in the moment. And so I'm not going to beat myself up, which is what tends to happen when we look back and think back on things. We start to beat ourselves up forgetting what it was really like in the moment. On the other hand, I wondered if she and her husband considered the children's future. Does she have a care plan in place for them once she and her husband have passed? Does she have help with two newborns? Does she have help when they are two or three years old and getting into everything? How old will she be when they turn 18? 88. She will be 88. How old is too old? I thought this would be an easy episode to do because, I don't know, I, 70? It's a, it's a lot. But I don't want you to think that I'm being judgmental and that I'm trying to tell any of you when to stop or when it's too old. That is not for me to say. Just like we never tell each other, it's time to go have that hysterectomy or it's time to stop that IVF now. We don't say that to each other. Because I believe in our community, the child is not by choice community, we know that you will know. Each individual will know when it's time to stop. So I wonder, I wonder, did she ever think it was time to stop or no? They don't really talk about that in the story from what I gathered. They don't talk about if she ever thought to stop at age 50 or 60 or 40. They just said that she had a baby, two babies at 70. And, you know, I would, I'd love to hear your thoughts about this because I really don't want to come across as judgmental because we just talked about the fact that they're going to have a new status in their village. How old is too old to have a new status in your village? I would love to hear your thoughts on this because I don't want to sound, like I said, like I'm being judgmental or unempathetic to this woman's plight of living in a part of the world where childlessness is frowned upon and, and the woman is blamed even if the issue is with the man and, you know, all of those things. Because it's the 21st century, but I honestly don't think much about human beings has changed. <laughs> I just don't. But time passes. We become more intelligent as, as far as the gadgets we get to use to so-called make life simpler and easier, which none of it does. But we're still dealing with a lot of things that we probably shouldn't be dealing with right now. But we just remain the same. We just continue to just remain the same as human beings. We have our belief systems, our judgmental behavior, and that's what I don't want to be a part of. 
But at the same time, how do we exercise wisdom? Should wisdom have been exercised here? And just said, you know what, I'm 70. It never happened, and I have to be content with it. And again, it can be easy for me to say over here in the Western world where we get a little bit of pushback from people who think they know what they're talking about. Again, that's coming up in the next episode, episode 159. We're going to be talking about people who have made commentary, people with humongous platforms who have made commentary without, in my opinion, doing any research to back up what they said. They just talked. And... As something, even with my little platform, that I try not to do. Because we don't know who's listening. We don't know who is at their wit's end. We don't know who is hanging on by a thread. And when you have humongous platforms, and when you have small platforms, words matter. So I really don't want you to go away thinking that I was being judgmental about this lady's plight and her situation. I wasn't. I just want to know. I want to know. I wish her the best. I wish them the best. I wish them every good thing, every good gift, everything. I do. I'm I'm not jealous. You guys know I'm not a jealous person. I've said it early in in episodes. I'm not jealous. I just wondered why not me. But I would not be jealous of those who got what I wanted. That's not my personality. I have other shortcomings and shortfalls, but jealousy and envy are not one of them or two of them. So I just. I don't know. I'm really wondering, you know, how old is too old? When do you stop? I don't think anyone's going to tell you when, at least not the lay people. Maybe a clinician will, a doctor, someone in the medical community, you know, whose voice carries weight. But I don't think that all of us here in our community, I think we get it. We're not going to tell each other when to stop, when to have the surgery, when to have the hysterectomy. That's not how we do things, and I know that. But 70, it's a lot. And I just had to do the research, read the article, and bring it here and ask you what you thought. Maybe you thought nothing at all. Just let her be, and I get it. But at the same time, maybe you have an opinion as well. But you know what? Whether we have an opinion or not, whether we think she shouldn't have done it or we don't see the big deal, especially if she has help in her community, in her village. It's a story. Have you heard of anybody at age 70 having a child? I honestly have not. I had not until now. The latest I had heard was somebody in their 50s, but never 70. So I found it intriguing, but I also, like I said, wish them the best. And if you have a thought on it, let me know. You can messenger me, Facebook or on Instagram, or email me, Sevilla at SevillaMorgan.com. But I just, I found the whole story intriguing, and it just, it's just pulling me, it continues to pull me in two different directions. It really does. Because I, like I said, I understand, I understand her plight in her part of the world. But when do you just say, you know what? I don't care what you all say. As my community, my village, my family, I've come this far with my husband. We didn't have children, and that's just the way it is. But they opted to just keep trying. What do you think? So, like I said, there are links in the show notes to this and other stories I believe you might find interesting. Also, be sure to visit the resources tab. There's a link there that will take you to Sheridan Voise's site. Remember, I was asked to be a contributor to his book that's coming out at the end of January. And so the link to his site is there. Uh, I'm going to be ordering some books. And, you know, I look forward to sharing more with you when the books come out. And in the meantime, I just wanted to reach out and just, you know, talk to you about this story, see what you thought about it, and wish you a happy new year because I haven't had a chance to do that. Last episode was December. And I know that I usually have a an interview. In January, I've been enjoying being able to have an interview as the first episode of the year. But honestly, as I've been explaining to friends, I am moving in slow motion, mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally moving in slow motion. It's like no matter how I try to move faster, it's just not happening. It's just not happening. But I'm sure you understand and I appreciate your understanding. I just wanted to reach out to say hello. Let you know I'm still here. 
I am actually literally working on the February episode, which is going to be all about the headlines. Looks like we're in the headlines. It's childless, not by choice people. And as I said earlier, by people who I doubt did any research. I just doubt it. I'm not saying that they're not educated. I'm, they are well educated. And that even to me makes it worse. And there goes that bandwagon thing I keep talking about, you know, as human beings, we like to jump on bandwagons and not really even know what the sign on the bandwagon says. We just jump on. And so we're going to be talking more about that for the February episode. But for this episode, I wanted to just take a moment to say hello. Happy New Year. I hope that you had a fabulous holiday season. And uh, I hope you take the time to read this story that I put this in the link in the show notes, along with the other stories that I placed there. Know that I'm working on the February episode filled with all of the headlines where we're being we're being discussed again. Also, I've already reached out to the first person I'd like to interview this year, and I have a couple more people to reach out to. So I will keep you posted. But I want to thank you for tuning in again. Thank you for forgiving my voice. But I really wanted to get this episode out to you as quickly as I could. I wish you all the best and I'll see you again with episode 159. Thank you.